Good morning guys, it is Tuesday, March 24th, and in this little video lecture, we are going to cover Hess's Law. So we are still in our heat energy packet that you all have, and again, you can access um, most of the blank packet under Files on Canvas, uh, if you look there. Um, we had, I had scanned it um, from where we left off again when we were still in class. So it has a little bit of notes on it and then the rest of it was blank. Um, in our previous videos, we covered calorimetry um, and I did several problems. Um, so again, you should be watching those regularly, right? So you don't get too far behind. Uh, that's really important. So let's start our Hess's Law. So here we are in our packet. So it says, um, what is Hess's law? Again, we're looking at um, how to find the heat or the enthalpy of a reaction. And in our calorimetry processes, we found heats of reaction um, and also enthalpies of um, solution processes, which were uh, the enthalpies of reaction. And our units we're focusing on were always kilojoules per mole. So there is another way to find the overall heat of a reaction um, through a different uh, method. So this is called the law of summation. Uh, the enthalpy of an overall reaction is the sum of elementary reactions that we do know their enthalpies of reaction. Basically, it's kind of like we're going to put a puzzle back together. And when you do puzzles, you have to sort of manipulate the pieces. So before we start working with our fancy chemicals here, um, we are going to just look at a very generic equation. <clears throat> so for example, let's say we were in the lab and we wanted to find the enthalpy of this reaction. Okay, and then just A and, B and D are generic little chemicals here. And we want to know what our enthalpy of our reaction is. Okay. Now, for some reason, maybe we couldn't do this exact equation in the lab. But maybe we had some slightly different information. Okay, so maybe, and I'm going to put our elementary reactions, let's say we had, I'm going to put them up here, B goes to D, okay. and we did know the enthalpy of that reaction. Let's just suppose it was 50 kilojoules. Okay. And then let's say we were able to do another similar reaction in the lab taking B and forming A. And we were able to measure in the lab the heat of that reaction. And this time it was exothermic, releasing 25 kilojoules of heat, okay? Now, these little puzzle pieces here are our elementary reactions. They have things that are in common with this one, okay? I can see my A, I can see it there. I can see my D, I can see it there. I'm not worried about the B. The B is not in my overall equation. And when you do Hess's Law, you don't wanna fuss on things that aren't in your overall. For the most part, if you just worry about the things that are in your overall equation and manipulate these puzzle pieces so that when they sum up, they add up to this one, you're gonna do just fine. So don't stress on things like the B that aren't even here. They'll cancel themselves out eventually, just kind of like our spectator ions canceled out. Okay, so how do we manipulate those pieces? What can we do? Well, if you look at our reaction here, we have A as a reactant, okay? And we have D as a product, okay? So we want the same to be true with our puzzle pieces here. Now, what other things are we gonna look at? Well, we have one mole of A 
and we have one mole of D. So that needs to be the same in our puzzle pieces. If it wasn't, then we'd need to fix it. So we're gonna get a lot of practice doing that. Um, so let's try doing some of those things. Now, a helpful piece of information is always to look at one puzzle piece at a time, okay? So look at one reaction at a time. So I'm going to cover up this one right here, okay? So we're just looking at this puzzle piece here, okay? Now, we're not worried about B, D. D notice we have as a product. And we also have one mole of it. And that's exactly what we want right here too. We want one mole of D and it's a product. So we don't need to do anything with this equation. We're going to leave it alone. So that means its heat remains unchanged, okay? Now let's look at our second reaction right there. Again, not worrying about the B. But what about the A? My A right here is a product, but do we want it as a product? No, we want it as a reactant, okay? So how do I make this a reactant? Well, I need to reverse my equation, okay? I'm gonna flip it, or I'm gonna go back the other way other direction. Now I don't want to just point my arrow to the left because again all of our arrows should be pointing to the right. Okay so I'm going to have to rewrite it but let's write down the changes that we're going to do. So I'm going to reverse or flip this equation and that's all I need to do. The only problem with A is that it's a product here and we want it as a reactant. We have one mole here, we have one mole there so the amount is good. Now, whatever we do to this equation, we need to also do to our enthalpy, okay? This equation is exothermic, but if we reverse this equation and go back the other direction, we're changing our heat flow. So we're gonna have to flip our sign there as well. So we always need to show our work. So I am going to rewrite those equations. So the first one, we didn't do anything to. So B goes to D. And the enthalpy for that we had was a positive 50 kilojoules, okay? And what did we do to the second one? We needed to reverse it. So now we have A goes to B. I'm lining up my arrows, just like you would do in algebra, lining up your pluses or your minuses, um, so you can easily see your work. <clears throat> now my delta H is no longer a negative 25, it should be a positive 25 kilojoules because I completely reversed my equation. And now we're gonna sum these things together. Now, we've learned before when we did our double replacement reactions and our total ionic and our net ionic, that anything that's the same on the left and the right canceled out, like our spectator ions. So what is the same on the left and the right side of the arrow? I can cancel out a B here, because a B is a reactant and a B is a product. That's gonna reduce and go away. You can't have the same reactant and product. So when we sum these things up, now we have our overall. A goes to D, which we see up here, so that matches, and the heat of that reaction is a positive 75 kilojoules. So we've got an endothermic reaction overall. And that's what we're gonna do in the next series of these um, reactions, doing some examples. So we're gonna do some, and then you need to do the remainder on your own. Um, something I do want you to fix in our packet, though, is to get rid of all these little moles that I put here. That's a little typo. Some people are like, well, I thought enthalpy is kilojoules over moles. And yes, that is true. But when we have seen that data before, um, in a previous problem using enthalpy as a conversion factor, I can put my kilojoules over moles of anything that I'm talking about in the equation. So really it should just be reported as kilojoules because again, I could put this negative 325 over one mole of SN. I could put negative 325 kilojoules over one mole of Cl2. Um, and and so on and so forth. Alrighty, so let's look at number two, that one I have circled there for you. This is our 
equation. For some reason, we can't measure the heat of that reaction in the lab. So that's what we're gonna figure out. And we have these elementary equations that have things in common with our overall. So once again, we want to look at things, our puzzle pieces, one step at a time. So looking at this first one here, what does it have in common with our overall equation? Okay, so the MnO2, okay, well, we do have MnO2 in our overall, it's right here. The problem is that here we want it as a product, and here it's a reactant. We don't want that. Now, before you get ahead of yourselves and start flipping the equation like we did in the previous example, we need to check everything else out as well. Now here, we have manganese. We have manganese up here. Here, we want it as a reactant, and here it's a reactant, so this is good, okay? So basically, I've got a smiley face here because that position is good. We both have one mole of those. The problem with this <clears throat> is this right here. So I'm gonna put a sad face next to this MnO2. Okay, so the question is, do we flip it or we do we leave it alone? Do I fix my MnO2 now, right, by reversing my equation, or do I leave this alone because I like the manganese position, right? So when you have two opposing things and you're trying to figure out who to fix, we'll take a peek at your second puzzle piece or your third one. If one of these repeats again, then we'll fix it later. Okay, so in this second one right here, notice we see the MnO2 repeating itself. So we're going to fix the MnO2 later, okay, because it repeats itself in the second puzzle piece. We'll get another chance to fix it. So we'll get another chance. to fix it, okay? So we don't wanna do anything to this first equation. We're gonna leave this alone so we don't mess up our manganese that is happy. We want it as a reactant. Now this MnO right here, are we gonna worry about that? No, don't care about it. It is not anywhere up there. It'll cancel itself out later. Now, looking at our second puzzle piece, yes, we were concerned about that MnO2. We need it as a product. There is the MnO, okay? We are not worrying about that, okay? And then here we have oxygen. Well, we do have oxygen up here. The problem is that, again, we want our oxygen as a reactant, Here, our oxygen is a product, okay? And then same thing here. We have our MnO2 as a reactant. And up here, we want it as a product. So we're gonna have to reverse this equation. And that way we can have our oxygen as a reactant. Right now it's a product and same thing here. Now some people might be a little worried about that too there, but we don't need to worry about it because in the previous equation we still have that manganese oxide, uh, or we should say manganese four oxide. Um, so it's gonna cancel itself out. So let's do our work. Okay, now our first equation we didn't do anything to but we need to rewrite it. I'm just leaving off the phases for now since we're just learning Hess's law, okay? Eventually we do wanna very much pay attention to those phases. All right, so we didn't do anything to this first one, so that means its enthalpy stayed the same, negative 240 kilojoules, okay? Now, 
looking at our second equation, we needed to reverse it to get that oxygen as a reactant and the MnO2 as a product. Okay, so reversing that, we would have the 2MnO right here plus oxygen, lining up my arrows. That way I don't get confused what's a reactant and what's a product. And then we've got our 2MnO2 right here. Now, since we totally flipped this equation, we changed the flow of our heat energy, I need to flip or reverse my sign. So instead of a positive 264, it's a negative 264 kilojoules. And we're going to add these together. Now, of course, we need to cancel any like terms that are the same. So what is the same? Meaning, what is the same on the reactant side and the product side? You can't have the same reactant and products. So there's two MNO here, and on the right, there's two MNO right there. So they cancel out. Okay. Uh, does anything else cancel out? Is anything else the same? Well, we can reduce this number here. We have one manganese 4 oxide right here, and we have two moles there. Okay. Now, it's not going to totally cancel out because remember, we need that manganese four oxide um, as our product, but we can reduce the number, okay? So since we have one over here, that guy's going to totally go away. Now, instead of having two here, we're just going to have one left. So we reduced that number. Now, if we write everything that we have left, notice we've got manganese plus oxygen, so those are my reactants. There's my reaction arrow. And what do we have left over here? We've got our one mole of manganese four oxide. And that looks exactly like the overall equation that we wanted. And now we have to sum our enthalpies. Nothing happened to the first one. The other one, the sign was reversed, just like the equation. So now we have a larger negative value. So very exothermic. And let's see if we add that up. Make sure you check your work at home. All right, I'm sitting here in my bathrobe on the floor uh, doing math pretty quickly. So you got to tell me if I make some mistakes. All righty. So we have a nice exothermic equation right there. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off there. I want you to practice some more. In the next short video, we will do a couple more examples.